And I just want to share with us as we go into this new month and as this year starts to round off, in the, in the spirit of what we're teaching in church right now, uh, which is the need for everyone to wake up and be audacious about the things that, you know, uh, about uh, um, the things that God may be placing in our hearts this season. And it's beyond just what God is placing in our hearts. We're saying, how big is your dream? We're saying, how open is your heart? We're saying, how prepared are you for what is ahead? Are you still hiding in caves and uh, hiding in the corner of nowhere? Or are you ready to face destiny to say, uh, if I'm alive, then I, I better be alive and well. I better be alive and focused. I better be alive and alive to the things that God wants to do in my life this season. Now, one very important thing that I want us to realize this morning as I share, I'm actually sharing on, on, on the power of a renewed mind, if I can put it that way, the power of a renewed mind. Uh, Romans 12 and 2 says we should not be uh, conformed to, to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, um, and when you look at the path of a renewed mind, it's, uh, I think as Christians generally, we are underestimated the power of a renewed mind. And uh, a lot of the time, we refuse to pay attention to, you know, to, to what, what God is doing, or we refuse to pay attention to the word of God, we pay attention to the power in what God has given us, which is the, the, the mind. And we, we allow it to waste. Uh, New Living Translation of Romans 12 and verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. I love that. Romans 12 and verse 2, New Living Translation, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Now, one of the greatest ways by which you can show audacity uh, in line with what we're teaching uh, this season is for you to be audacious in your thinking and to challenge negative thinking patterns and put them to rest and embrace new thinking pattern and see yourself the way God sees you. Now, let me challenge you this morning. For many people, for many of us hearing me right now, your mind is already working on, oh, PJ is trying to say, think big. Uh, see yourself as doing more. Uh, see yourself as having more. Uh, see yourself as, as going to the places where you haven't been before. See yourself as knowing more and this and that. All that is very good and very fantastic. Uh, but before we get into all that, what I'm literally saying is that see yourself, be audacious enough to see yourself as a changed person. Yeah. See yourself as a changed person. Because this scripture, it, it, it says we should not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. See yourself as a changed person. What really challenged me uh, to, to want to speak to us about this this morning uh, was this. I've been studying the life of David uh, in first summer, uh, the past few days uh, from last week, uh, reading through the book of first summer I mean, on second summer now. Uh, in, in first summer, I saw the power of a mind and a heart that is properly anchored, that, is, that, is, that, that has experienced some level of permanent change and it was tested profusely but it remained steadfast i'm talking about the heart and mind of david now let me refresh your memory a bit david was just a young man very young you know the last in his in his in his father's house uh, uh 
He has, uh, I think, another seven or eight brothers. He he was keeping his father's sheep, and then God just uh, signaled the end of Saul's reign because of his shenanigans, and sent Samuel and said, "Just go, go to this city and go to the house of Jesse and uh, go and anoint me a king." I just, I mean, this regime is over. Now, God deliberately chose David, perhaps because he saw that David had worked on his heart uh, to a particular point at that time that made him just useful for this purpose. But David did not stop there. God chose him, he was anointed, but that anointing was just to awaken certain things inside of him. It was not to enthrone him ultimately as a king at that time. Uh, uh, it reminds me of what is happening right now in Nigeria. Uh, there's an anointing on the new generation. That anointing is well, an awakening first and foremost. It's not that the day you are anointed, the throne will be delivered into your hand. You know, instead answers and good, uh, bad governance and all that. Uh, you, you can't just hand bad governance. It's a process, but something has been triggered. Uh, a democratically elected uh, gov government cannot be overthrown uh, by a band of youths. Uh, it's, it's just uh, an, an, an awakening that set a process in place. And it's a process really, that is a process of mind renewal. It's a process of seeing yourself a different way. It's, it's a process that says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And changing the way you think starts with changing how you see yourself. I don't know if you've read a book before by James Allen, uh, as he thinketh, as a man thinketh. Uh, 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 Proverbs 23 and verse 7 uh, says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, you know, I, I went back to that book early this morning. I'm just flipping through again. I see great thoughts from James Allen about the power of the human mind and that if you want to change the life of a man, or change the life of a woman, you need to change the way uh, the man or a woman thinks. That what goes into a mind comes out in a life. Can I say that one more time? What goes into a life, um, into a mind comes out in a life. As, he, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So uh, the greatest uh, uh, investment that any of us can make in our lives is not the investment of money, on real estate or bonds or shares, it is the investment in our heart and in our, through our mind. I'm going to explain that in a bit. The investment in your life, in your heart, through your mind, uh, 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 to bring your mind to that place of transformation. Let me go back to David a little bit. Uh, David, one of the most striking things that happened in first in the whole of First Samuel was what happened in First Samuel 24. Now, before I read that. Uh, from 1 Samuel 24, I just want to bring you up to speed a bit. After David killed Goliath, David was announced to his, his world, to his nation. Women were singing. They were singing, David had killed, Saul has killed his thousand, David has killed his 10,000. It's like saying, look, literally speaking, they were enthroning another king when the king was still alive. And Saul became furious. There was something that made God reject Saul. It was his uh, inability to obey instruction, to be obedient. You know, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. When a man gets to a point where God can locate pride and disobedience in your heart consistently, that you are so set in your ways that God had to reject you. He said, I've rejected you as king. It's a terrible place to be because ordinarily, God has given each and every one of us the power to change our mind. May you never get to a place where even God will give up on you that your mind can no longer change. That was where God got to in the life of Saul. And uh, as a New Testament believer, here in Romans 12 and verse two, it was, Peter was painted to us that the power to reconfigure my mind and thereby uh, restructure my heart to put myself up as a person that God can use is available. Yeah, the Bible says some have a form of godliness, 
but they deny the power. That power is the power to change. The difference between religion and real New Testament Christianity and becoming the fully devoted follower of Christ is my ability to embrace the power for change, the power for change. And when I say change, I mean my own personal transformation. You know, somebody can go to church from now to tomorrow. I mean, you can, you can go to all night prayers, online prayers. You know, these days we have all kinds of prayer calls, pray, online prayers, different things. And many people go to those places uh, with their heart open, but only for miracles, not for life transformation. And that's a tragedy. You see, if a body is healed and the mind is unrenewed, that life is still a tragedy going somewhere to happen. That life will still pull down a marriage. That life will still, uh, you know, hurt somebody. Yeah, it's just an empowered life to do damage. As much as I love the ministry of healing and I love to see people healed and I pray for people almost on a daily basis to be healed, I, 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 I fancy it more when somebody's mind has been healed and has changed because the person then become, you know, the Bible says uh, we are God's work, workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that Christ has ordained before, you know, the, the foundation. If somebody is still doing bad works, if somebody is still dejected, if somebody uh, still suffers, you know, lack of esteem, low self-esteem, if somebody still suffers from insecurity, that makes it difficult for you to listen to other people, you know, that makes it difficult for you to yield within a team and work with other team members, that makes it difficult for you to, to, to forsake the life of competition and humble yourself, you know, before God, that makes it difficult for you to listen to your spouse and, and, and engage in humility, that makes it difficult for you to know that people don't hate you people love you and for it starts with you loving yourself that makes it difficult for you to understand that a negative habit will yield a terrible life and that you have the power to turn around every negative habit and defeating thoughts you see when a person remains like that or the person gets a breakthrough job or gets a, a breakthrough healing or gets you know this breakthrough business and money the person is just empowered with a bad heart to continue to do evil hurt people cut down people inflict pain and wreak havoc you know destroy one marriage do this you know just all that then what 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 are we you know when jesus was here he was teaching he was preaching then he was healing yeah Teaching and preaching for life transformation supersedes physical help. Because when somebody has received physical help, but the heart has not changed, the person has only been empowered. We have many witches and wizards in churches today, uh, literally speaking, I don't mean it literally, but almost literally speaking, uh, people who are so religious, but their mind has not changed. They cause the most problem in their offices, uh, they destroy a nation, uh, with impunity, and they still profess to be, uh, uh, you know, a Christian. They will still ask for healing prayers, ask for breakthrough prayers, but there's no breakthrough in their mind that will lead to breakthrough in their heart. As staff in this organization, one of the greatest things you can do for us right now as a group of people, one of the greatest things you can do for your family right now, whether you're married or single, is to trust God to help you to gain a level of mind renewal that can unleash you to your world. Saul was a terrible king. It came to a point where God had to reject somebody that he initially appointed because he was so set in his ways, he had lost the capacity uh, to outgrow insecurity. Yeah, he lost the capacity to outgrow insecurity. Uh, to the point that a little boy could so make him, I mean, could so wreck his self-esteem, make him so insecure, he didn't even see that he, he, maybe he, he was supposed to uh, plan a transition and say, if this guy can bring down Goliath, let me just be king emeritus or whatever. I, I can even ordain him king myself. If it's about the kingdom and not about me, 
if it's for Israel to be able to prevail over the Philistines and not just about Saul remaining king, then I can yield to him if need be. It, that didn't occur to him. He was just in this self-preservation mode. He made up his mind he was going to kill David. Yeah. Whereas David, on the other hand, I believe as he ministered to God, you know, writing all the Psalms and singing and just worshiping God and spending time in prayer, his heart was changing. He was gaining revelation. You know, if a man can write Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters, he restores my soul. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. He that Song can be coming from the heart. That heart must be renewed. That heart has a relationship with God. Yeah, that has had uh, it has a relationship with God. Yesterday, I was you know I was studying uh, um, a verse of the Scripture, uh, Ephesians uh, uh, one, at, I think maybe verse eighteen or so. He said that you, you may know what is the hope of His calling and what is the inheritance to all the saints. When you check that word there, know or knowing, it is the Greek word genosko. Which, which is which they said the, the English word they're using to, to translate Genosco cannot even, it's not even scratching the surface. And this is my own interpretation of it. As we walk with God, our the way we know God should start to change. Now, all of you on this platform this morning, you know my wife, PB, to a certain extent. But the, the Genosco, what is written there is is the is the the knowledge that is experiential, that is intimate, that, that is based on performance, that is based on longevity of, you know, of, of intimacy, you know, and all that. I've known my wife now almost 20 years. We've been married uh, about seven, 17 years next month, you know. Uh, um, there's a level of knowing that I know of her that nobody on this platform can claim to know her that way. Some of you know her as PB. Uh, a preacher of God's word. Some of you know her as PB, a finance expert, or PB, the mother of, of two ladies, or you know, PB, uh, that uh, easygoing lady, you know, who just keeps to herself or whatever. Uh, you know her in many ways, but I know her in so many other ways. That is uh, how God, when God says, uh, when Paul was praying to us that we may know him, you know, that the, you know that we may know. The hope of his calling that we may know that it looks to me like David really pursued that, and it, it then demonstrated that knowing uh, through the, the psalms that he was singing that we read today as as as, as psalms, you know, uh, um, and it's that level of knowing that yields mind renewal. So Saul did all that. David came into an alliance with Jonathan. Jonathan was giving him information. They actually then came to terms with the fact that Saul really wanted to kill this guy. But the level of knowing and mind transformation that he had made him unable to turn against Saul. How do you react when you know that somebody has demonstrated to you that they are actually against you? Do you have an anchor within your soul that can anchor you on the right thing? In spite the, despite the fact that you have seen that somebody is about to do the wrong thing to you and do evil to you. That's what I'm talking about. That is the mark of a life that has been transformed. Not vacillating. Not you are good today, bad tomorrow. Not I'm good on somebody does evil. Then I will show the person that I also have evil in me. The truth is that if you don't have evil, in you, you don't have evil. You know what the scripture says? Uh, uh, what, what I mean is Matthew 12 and verse 35. The Bible says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. If it's not there, it's not there. When you are undergoing mind renewal consistently, some things are no longer there. When a mind is renewed, a heart is restructured. And when a heart is restructured, it's difficult to corrupt that heart again. We saw this in the life of David. In 1 Samuel 24, David got information that, <clears throat> that Saul was, was in a particular place. Saul was chasing him. And then Saul has, and his men, they were then sleeping, you know, in a particular place. In, 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 uh, in, verse, uh, 
in verse 3 of 1 Samuel 24, the Bible says, and, and the place where the road pass, uh, some, uh, passes some, some sheep fold. I'm reading New Living Translation. Saul went into a cave to relieve himself. But as it happened, David and his men were uh, hiding further back in that very cave. Look at verse 4. Now your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today, the Lord is telling you, <laughs> I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. But David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's rope. So he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord, the King. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one for the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul. This is the height of loyalty, not just to a man, but to God and to God's kingdom, Israel, in the scriptures. It can only happen with a man whose mind is renewed, and based on that mind renewal, his heart has been reconfigured. This, ladies and gentlemen, is real audacity. This man was audacious. For you to know that someone was about to kill you, and you have the man within the ambit of, you know, of, of space where you can strike him down. And you still have enough conscience based on your knowledge of God to say no. <laughs> I challenge everyone that is single, married, that is listening to me right now, anyone that has been tempted in the last few months to sin against God, the sin of adultery or fornication. Where is your conscience? Where is your heart? Is your mind renewed to know the implication of that thing? Because when you know the implication of it, it has a way of reconfiguring your heart. When your heart has been reconfigured, your conscience will be as loud as ever. Because in certain areas of life, some of our consciences have been seared with hot iron. So there can no longer be transformation. For some people, when it comes to money, your conscience has been seared with hot iron. So you can do anything with money that does not belong to you and just look away as if nothing happened. And then uh, after you have done it, the next thing you are just speaking in tongues as if nothing happened and just move on. Life continues. But some people, it's the weakness of the body in terms of adultery and fornication or just being lustful. Yeah. For some other people, it's your capacity to talk about other people and cut them down and behave. You know, David did not kill here, but David also never said anything that is, you know, uncalled for, that is unjust, that is degrading about Saul. He was just committing Saul into the hands of God and just his conscience was so awakened. For a man's conscience to be that awakened, it means that his mind is hooked on God's word and God's precepts. That's what happens there. When you see in certain areas where your mind is renewed, you don't struggle to behave well. A man whose mind is renewed about money, for instance, and honoring God will never struggle to pay tithe. Even when it's difficult, your conscience will speak loud to you, loud. And you will hear that, uh, no, 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 this, I'm, I'm beyond this level. I've worked with God. I've known God in a genosco way, in a, an intimate way, enough to understand. David knew that touching Saul will have a grave repercussion. He knew God to be a just God. He knew God to be a faithful God. And in his faithfulness, he has set some things in order. Yeah. That this world will work on the principle of cause and effect. Sowing and reaping. I mean, David demonstrated so much. Even when Saul died, the guy <laughs> who, uh, uh, who claimed to kill Saul, Saul told the guy, 
fall on me, I mean, uh, uh, you know, and all that. The guy did not do it. Saul eventually killed himself. But this guy went and told David that uh, he was the one. Saul begged him to strike him, so he struck, you know. He thought that he had brought good news. When people come to you, and because they felt somebody is against you or somebody is your enemy, they brought gist about the person. What's your disposition towards it? David said, you killed Saul because you thought he was after my life and it's my enemy. Don't you know that the anointing of God is on him as a king? Don't you know that he's our king, he's our leader? <laughs> David told them, kill this guy, just kill him. Yeah. He has brought a curse upon himself by, you know, by this. And it, it, that, was, that was his constant disposition. And I, you know, the question I ask myself is, even Saul here, when Saul uh, uh, heard what, what, uh, what David had, had done, you know, Saul told David, he said, so let, let me even read a bit further. Uh, 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 so in verse 8, Bible said, David came out and shouted after him, my Lord, the king. Then Saul looked around, and David bowed low before him. Then he shouted to Saul, why do you listen to the people who say I'm trying to harm you? This very day, you can see with your own eyes, it isn't true. For the Lord placed you at my mercy back there in the cave. Some of my men told me to kill you, but I spared you. For I said, I will never harm the king. He is the Lord's anointed one. Look at verse 11. Look, my father, at what I have in my hand. It is a piece of the hem of your robe. I cut it off, but I did not kill you. This proves that I'm not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you have been hurting, hunting for me to kill me. Look at verse 12. May the Lord judge between us. Perhaps the Lord will punish you for what you are trying to do to me, but I will never harm you. So he's saying, I just abandon you in the hand of God. Whatever God wants to do to you, but not me. Verse 13 says, as it is, okay, let me, let me, let me jump that. Verse 14, he said, who is the king of Israel trying to catch anyway? This is how David saw himself. Should he spend his time chasing one who is as worthless as a dead dog or, or, or a single flea? May the Lord, therefore, Judge uh, which of us is right and punish the guilty one. He is my advocate. Look at that. He said, He's my advocate. That's how, this is how he knew, he, David knew God. He said, He's my advocate and he will rescue me from your power. When the Bible says in verse 16, when David had finished speaking, Saul called back, Is that really you, my son David? <laughs> with his bad heart, he was speaking. Then he cried. He began to cry. Then, and then he said to David, you are better than I am, for you have repaid me good for evil. New King James says, you are more righteous than I am. Saul acknowledged the righteousness of David and all that David said, and he cried, yet his heart did not change. Verse 18 says, yes, you have been amazing, amazingly kind to me today. But when the Lord put me in, in, in the place where you could have killed me, you, you didn't do it. Who else would let his enemy go get away when he had him in his power? May the Lord reward you well for the kindness you have shown me today. And now I realize that you are surely going to be king. <laughs> See, uh, uh, so at this point, he even gave up. He said, you are going to be king, and the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. Now swear to me by the Lord that when that happens, you will not kill my family and destroy my line of descendants. So David promised this to Saul with an oath. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went back to their stronghold. See, the trust that was broken there was not immediately uh, restored. In fact, it was impossible for it to be restored because Saul accepted that David would become king, but it didn't stop him from repenting from all his evil. May you never get to a point where your heart has become irredeemable on certain areas of life. 
That's what makes people have a rigmarole experience in their work with God and in their spiritual life. When their heart can no longer change about certain things, certain areas of life. Yeah, the real proof that the Holy Spirit is living in you is that what you could not do last year, what your mind has not been renewed about last year, your mind is renewed about it this year, and you're making progress in that area. The Bible says, why would the old faintly as in the glass, the glory of God, we are changed, we are transformed. I think that's 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. We are changed. It said, we all with unveiled faces, beholding faintly uh, as in the glass, the glory of God, we are changed from one level of transformation to another as by the Spirit of God. If I have the Holy Ghost, uh, my mind uh, should be renewed consistently and it should lead to the reconfiguration of my heart so that uh, I can you know, work with God with sincerity of heart and things around me can change. So if you're on this platform this morning, you know you're struggling with insecurity. You find it difficult to trust people. You compare yourself with people. You, you, you are in competition with family members, with colleagues at work, with friends, always competing negatively. Yeah, you're dealing with low self-esteem or you are fearful or any sense of hopelessness is setting in. Or you lack the can-do spirit, grit, because hopelessness is setting in. Can I tell you today, it is not something that you can just resolve by just jumping out there and saying it's time to be audacious. No, be audacious inside by allowing the Holy Spirit, yielding your heart to him for transformation, yielding your mind to him for transformation. Allow the Holy Spirit to help you deal with defeating thoughts. Like we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, you know, the weapons of our warfare, not being kind of, but being mighty true God, but the pulling down of strongholds, negative belief system, you know, and all that. That's the real mind renewal and transformation that leads to heart reconfiguration that puts you in a place where when the wind and the waves of life comes, uh, you know, come, they cannot displace you. David had all his opportunities to misbehave against Saul, but in that area, his heart is already anchored, completely anchored. Yeah, his heart was completely anchored, completely anchored. As I wrap this all up, I want to challenge you. I ask you this question. Is your mind a basket or a bucket? A basket mind leads to a basket like basket case <laughs> because everything drains through. So you come into a garden like this, you listen to the word, you do, but you have put too many holes in your heart or your mind uh, that it cannot retain revelation knowledge, let alone process it. You know, in the parable of Soa, Jesus described different hearts or different, you know, different mind as the case may be. Some can retain the word, some cannot retain the word, some word can prosper there. Some, how is, what is, what, what does your heart or mind look, look like right now? What, what does it, what, what does it look like? You know, what does it look like? Is it a basket that cannot retain water or is it a bucket with which you can scoop and you know that, you know, when you, when you have bought too much fear, um, uh, insecurity, you just oppose it on other people. When you harbor too much lack of trust, then when people speak to you, you don't believe what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. When, when I mean, there are people who come into a church, who come into services, they have their own mindset about pastors. So there's nothing a pastor is going to say that is going to find a resting place in their heart. Somebody just forced them to church. Those are the kind of people who pray for that God will arrest their mind. But you are not in that, you know, frame again. You are a, a, a professing Christian. Then open your heart up. Make it not like a basket, but a bucket that can still contain. But let me stretch this a little bit. Some people have their mind is like a bucket. It can retain, right? But in this season of being audacious, a bucket is not good enough. You need a tank. You need a tank. Uh -huh. You need to expand your capacity to get revelation knowledge, to get new ideas. Some ideas should not assault your mind. The encounter of Peter in, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 or so, uh, that's what it's about. God just expanding what used to be a bucket to a drum. Something that only captured the, the, the household of Israel 
to something that can now capture up to Gentiles and believe that God can use me there. God can do this to me and to be audacious enough to go to the house of Colinius, a place where you will not go normally. It starts with the, 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 the heart, you know. I also want to ask, is your heart or mind, is it always personal and selfish or is it kingdom? Yeah, is it kingdom? Is it kingdom? When you work in a team, you can always be looking out for your own good only. Maybe that's how your heart or mind has been configured. When God wants to make you more audacious, he starts to transform that mind or heart that is not about you. It's about the team. It's not about you. It's about the church. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom of God. So that's how the making of an Abraham to becoming an Abraham, it's a mind thing. It's a heart thing. It's not just about change of name. Abraham, just a man who was just looking for a child and has his own personal need to becoming, I mean, Abraham, who was just a man looking for a child, a personal need to becoming uh, uh, somebody who can, the Bible says in you, all the families of the house shall be blessed. Will you allow God to blow your mind and bust your brain like that and, 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 and let, 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 let you see yourself a different way. That's what we're talking about this morning because that's a progression of Abraham, our father. And that was what, that was what the Bible calls faith. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. That's the real faith is when I allow my mind to change, to be renewed, and then my heart is configured and my heart is rooted and then I can go further faster and accommodate everything that God will put in my heart and in my life. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. So this season, we need to be able to trust God for divine encounters that will positively assault, if there's anything like that, our minds. Positively transform and transfigure our minds in the place of prayer, in the place of worship, in the place of study of the word, in the place, you know, of downloading revelation knowledge in the place of reading other people's story. You know, in the past week, I was uh, uh, trying to read a uh, 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 brand new Saints biography. And I'm, I'm, I mean, my brain was just busting as I read through, you know, especially when he was telling the story of when Ilson turned 10, that got my attention and all the things that he did that time. And those are some of the things I'm working on right now because it just leads to the transforming of your mind whatever see I, I say it again as a round of one of the greatest investment you can make in your life this season are the investment that will lead to a change of thinking what goes into a mind comes out in a life real life transformation is personal it is internal you cannot travel within and remain standstill without when you start to travel within then your life makes progress outside the reason why many people are just simply religious today, they go to church, but they cannot actualize the word of God, is that they look for external blessings and neglect internal blessing, which is mind transformation that leads to act reconfiguration. Yeah, that's the internal blessing. That was what happened to Abraham. Then it became bigger, you know, than ever before. But it takes a level of audacity to open up your mind, to challenge your thought. To ask yourself, why am I still bitter? Why do I think like this? How come I can't stand this person? How come I, you know, I'm still this disagreeable, you know, about this or that? How come I'm still struggling with this? What is the pathway for coming out of this bad habit? You know, can I engage the, the power of God strategically to break whatever it is so I can walk free? Because ultimately, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the blessing of your word this morning. We ask, Father, that you pour out your grace over everyone. And for everyone today whose time of mind transformation has come, we know it's your will for everyone to live in a, a consistent transformation. You said your ways are not our ways. And your thoughts are not our thoughts, Isaiah 55 uh, from verse 8. You said, as the heavens are 
far above the heart, so our ways far above our ways. Lord, this morning we ask that you bring us in alignment with your ways and your thoughts. Can I ask more this you mouth? Open your mouth this morning and talk to God about it. And just tell him, Lord, help me to be audacious enough to open my heart to you. I don't want to be rejected like Saul. I don't want opportunity uh, this morning been set in your ways. Will you come to the hands of God? Praying, understanding, praying, understanding. If there's any area where you know that God Himself can come against you if you don't do something fast, this is my God. Father, help me today. Help me into 2021. Help me. Uh, to see myself the way you see me. If you struggle with low self-esteem this morning, I want you to pray about it. You are who you are in Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. And your mind is to be able to, I mean, to be renewed to see it. If you know that, 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 that you're dealing with anything, bitterness, with insecurity, with lack of trust, The Bible says, if the way of a man places the Lord, he will make his enemies to be a I want to lift your voice this morning. This prayer, but you need to say a prayer. You need to say a prayer. You can't be a part of this and this morning without that something. Let's break. <laughs> 